welcome to another episode of Good Libations, our show about mixology. And I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and I've been doing this show for a while. And we've always tried to make it innovative and interesting and creative and do different drinks, some tropical, some traditional, some modern creations. And again, all these drinks are viable and good. And if we add our own little flourishes to them and our own creative nuances, they're even better. And again, this is something that we shouldn't be afraid of. We may feel that we don't have expertise in mixology, but sometimes we can surprise ourselves. We may discover that we do indeed have expertise. And basically, like with food, if you have a good palate and you enjoy food, you usually are a good chef. And the same thing, same principle with mixology and drink making. It's the palate and what we can detect on our palate that can help us to create a good drink, a different drink, a better drink from what is usually made. And the drink that we're going to focus on today is the mint julep. And again, this evokes visions of the Kentucky Derby, the antebellum south, the post-antebellum south, Southern traditionalism, even New Orleans, even though actually that drink did not come from New Orleans. And we're actually going to talk at more length in another episode about drinks from New Orleans. We've made hurricanes on a previous episode, but we're going to talk about Sazeracs, New Orleans fizzes, and other drinks that are indigenous to that part of the South. And again, Cajun and Creole culture is a rich, complex, interesting culture. And Southern culture in general, I think, is interesting and fascinating both the food and the drinks. But anyway, we're going to learn a few, a few things about making mint juleps, which is a deceptively simple drink. But there are certain things, if you do, that are going to make that drink kicked up several notches and different and better than an ordinary mint julep, we'll say. And again, usually the glassware that is used for a mint julep is either a tall glass or a pedestal glass, but I like to actually use a short old-fashioned glass for this drink like I do with whiskey sours at certain points in time. But at any rate, we're going to learn a few things, like I mentioned, about making a really good mint julep. And one thing is the mint. And as a general rule, the mint that I access comes from a lady who actually has a gardening show on KGM. Her name is Karen. I believe her last name is Suarez. But she actually provided me with some fresh mint from her garden. And it was excellent. I mean, absolutely excellent. Unfortunately, I ran out, so we're going to use store-bought mint. But the mint in a mint julep, you want to, you know, first of all, use an adequate amount of it. And you want to kind of like run the mint through your fingers to bruise it a bit before you drop it in the glass, because then you're releasing the oils, the aromatics, into that glass before you actually start doing other things to the mint. And we're going to use just a little bit more, even though this is a short glass. And again, we're going to do a couple of other things with the mint julep that traditionally are not done. And first of all, we're going to add our bourbon before we add ice or anything else. A nice little hand pour here, of a generous amount of bourbon. And then we're going to add some sugar to it. And we're going to do something with it right after we add the sugar. What we are going to do is not really muddle it, but bruise it slightly with a metal spoon of all things. Because again, that's going to release more of the oils and the flavor and help the sugar to really blend in its granularity with the bourbon and with the mint. And then we're going to go ahead and add our ice. And again, we want to add enough ice to make the drink cold and pleasant, but not so much ice that it overpowers the alcohol or the mint or the other flavors that I like to put in this drink. And also, this is definitely not traditional or classical. 
but I like to add a little bit of lemon to the mint julep, just a little bit. And again, like when I make Manhattans, what I like to do is make sure that I get some of the skin, because again, that peel, you're gonna get the oils out of it, some of the pulp, and some of the actual fruit, and just give it a squeeze and drop it in that mint julep. And again, that adds a nice little extra dimension to the drink that will make it more complex and a bit better. And I might add just a tiny bit more bourbon to this drink, just because. And again, when you have a mint julep in this style, you will truly understand why it became immensely popular at one point in time and why it evokes images of the South and is so popular, particularly in the Southern United States. And another thing that I like to do with the mint julep, like I do with other drinks, like the Manhattan and the whiskey sour, is add a maraschino cherry as a garnish to the drink. And again, this is done for a purpose. That was like about a quarter of a maraschino, so I'll add more. Because it makes the drink look pretty, and it adds a little bit of extra flavor to the drink from that maraschino. And again, you can make juleps using different alcohols. In fact, it's almost like a mojito. You can muddle fruit in that mojito in addition to the mint. And with the juleps, you can make them from rum. Many people do that. You can actually make them from vodka, but how much better to use bourbon? Because like we've talked about before, bourbon has kind of fallen out of favor to a certain degree because people tend to like light alcohols. But the bourbon should never ever be neglected in our drink making. Whiskey sours are a wonderful drink, in particular if they're made from bourbon. And again, Manhattans, other drinks, too, that incorporate bourbon are wonderful. Even drinking bourbon straight with just a little bit of lemon is really lovely. And again, you're going to appreciate different types of alcohol in drinks. And again, you don't really muddle the mint in a mint julep. You bruise it a bit with your fingers when you add it. And then you want to bruise it a bit more with a metal spoon, although you could use an actual wooden spoon as well. But that is going to extract the oils and add that nuance and that extra dimension of flavor to your drink. So don't skip any of the steps and you will find out that you have an extraordinary drink and not something that's ordinary. And by the way, on future episodes, we're actually going to have a guest bartender, and I've mentioned this before, and ironically his name is Bob Barr. And he used to be a bartender mixologist at very upscale establishments, mostly in Orange County, such as the Fairmount, which they actually went to the trouble of making all their own juices, their own simple syrup, and concentrating on fresh ingredients rather than commercial products. And we're actually going to do a show where we talk about the Rat Pack era and make all those cocktails that are associated with the Rat Pack. And I think that's going to be interesting to have somebody who has expertise as a guest and isn't just there to talk about themselves or what they did or whatever, but to actually specifically hone in on mixology and making truly fine drinks and how they learn to make drinks. And this gentleman, like myself, never went to bartending school. He basically learned on the job because his dad owned various different establishments over the years. And again, flashing a diploma is not necessarily a positive thing. It's more competence that's going to impress people. And this is why I always mention that you don't have to be an expert to make good drinks. So always remember that and never underestimate what you can do. And again, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Good Libations. Again, this is our show about mixology, specifically for our community. And again, always keep our community safe and well-spoken of by showing responsibility and moderation in our consumption. Always remember, that's a true compliment. Once again, this is Good Libations. 
I'm Ethel Andrews, a mixologist, and thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.